Let me start this video by saying I have no special training. I've never repaired the garage door opener before, but recently I've encountered a problem where I come out, I hit the button to open my garage door. Sometimes it opens slowly. Sometimes I can hear the mechanism turning in the garage door opener, but the door won't go up all the way and I have to manually assist it. So I'm gonna to try to tackle it. If I run into a problem, I'm gonna to go to YouTube, watch a YouTube video. If this video is posted, that means I was successful at fixing it. If I can fix it with no expertise, with no training, that means you can fix it. Save yourself some money and try to tackle this problem yourself. Like I said, if the video is posted, then I was successful. If I was successful, you can do it too. Okay, this is what my problem looks like. I push the button. We hear the motor going, but the door only opens slightly. We hear the motor is still turning. So what I have to do is go over and manually assist it. And it gets to a point, the motor's still going, but it won't go up, so I am going to lift it by hand and the motor has cut off. It took a couple minutes and I referred to a couple YouTube videos. And in watching the videos, I learned a couple things about the inner workings of a garage door opener. There's a warm gear and a main gear. And just based on the videos, I think that's my problem. Okay, it looks pretty dirty in there and I can immediately tell that the gear right here is worn. So I want to check the top driving gear that's hooked to the chain and see what it looks like. Okay, and that gear looks fine. I just removed those four screws and the casing isn't dropping. So at this point what we're going to do is we're going to move around to the front of the garage door opener and I see four more screws. So I'm about to remove those also and hopefully the entire case will drop. Okay, all the white shredded plastic is a clear indicator that our gears have been grinding for quite some time. And as we climb the ladder, we can more closely inspect the gears and see they're in very bad shape. Okay, at this stage what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my phone to take a series of pictures of the gears. There's quite a few gears in there. So I'm gonna take a series of pictures just so I can be clear on how everything goes back together. Now that I'm actually gonna be working inside the unit, it's pretty important that I do this next step which is unplugging the unit. Now we're at the point where I'm going to remove this lower clip that holds the gear in with the flat tip screwdriver. And I simply apply some pressure to the front till it pushes out of the back and then remove it the rest of the way by hand. There's three bolts that hold the top gear in. Okay, we're this far into the job and at this point we have only used two tools, a screwdriver and a wrench. Yeah, if there was ever a project custom made for a do-it-yourselfer, this is turning out to be it. Okay, now we're going to slide off the lower gear. And it slides off by tugging with decent pressure. Then we're going to move to the top of the unit. I was unable to pull the gear out by hand, so I'm going to lightly tap at this point with a hammer and see if I can get it to go up. I was thinking that it might be a problem with the chain, 
but I have quite a bit of slack, so there shouldn't be a significant amount of tension coming from the chain. So we're gonna tap on this with a hammer and see what happens. Okay, it is going up. I can see a space being created. Okay, and lightly tapping with the hammer did the trick. Now I'm free to take the chain off and pull the entire gear system out through the top. So let's go and see if we can get this replaced. It was no accident that we took this part off before we tried to get a replacement part. A lot of people would have looked at the model number on the unit, they would have went to the store, or they would have went online and ordered a part based on model number. But as long as we have this piece in hand, we can compare the old piece and a new piece and ensure they're not minute differences that are going to throw us off of the installation process. Okay, we're going to simply do things in reverse order. We have our part. I'm going to reinstall it through the top. And I remember that it was a little bit difficult to get the chain off. So right now, even before I align everything, I'm going to put the chain on the sprocket. Dropping it back down, applying a little bit of pressure. Okay, now that I have everything aligned up top, I'm coming to the bottom. I'm going to slide the gear, slide the gear back in place, securing it with the tab. And that should be it. I'm not going to replace the worm gear. It seems to be in near perfect shape. If it wasn't, I would simply remove the three bolts holding the motor in and then pull the motor out from the rear. If at any point you need to tighten or loosen the chain, that can be done with this series of nuts right here.